Talking live, I'm Dr. Robbie Ludwig out of Starshop Studio in Times Square. Today we have a very impressive teen, and she is really old enough to be my daughter, or young enough to be my daughter, I should say, and is so impressive we all can learn so much from her. She is a teen celebrity radio host. She's also a producer. She's working on fantastic new projects, which we are going to find out first right here. And she's also a journalist. She has interviewed some very, very famous people and got her start really, really young. So this girl's been working a long time. She is a motivation to her generation. And my son is single. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> he's single. Maybe he's not ready yet, but he's going to be successful. So maybe in a few years. We'll circle back. He's kind of yeah. cute. He's okay. a little young for you. He's a year younger. Okay. But, you know, yeah, yeah whatever. We Whatever. Friendship. Yes. We Start with friends. friends. Yes. Anyway, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, you so much for having me. We have a it. mutual friend who has been singing your praises Aww, for a you. long time. And then I was doing research about you. And quite honestly, when it comes to the entertainment business... Right. It's really hard to it's know. So hard. <laughs> it's really hard, period. Right. And it's really hard to know how to get into it. Right. And yet, you started in this very fascinating way. I'll let you tell the story. But at the age of 11. So yes. you didn't start out in radio. You started out as a dancer and a performer. So yes. bring us back to your days as a dancer. And I think we have yeah. some really cute, adorable oh. pictures of you up in the air dancing. Yes. Right there. That's on oh. a New York City building, actually. Oh, my God. Yeah. I you look was, like Pippi Longstocking <laughs> there. Everyone says that yeah. Pippi Longstocking and Punky Brewster, I yes, think, is yes. my Yes, yes. Well, that's a huge yeah. compliment. Oh, <laughs> so you were a dancer, yes. a street performer. What happened? Where did this all come from? I know. It's really just, but I've always had interested, like, I've always had interests in everything. You know yeah. what I mean? I was a kid that wanted to do everything. And um, dance was my, my heart and soul. I love mm -hmm. dance. Um, I did you wanted to be on Broadway, which is right here, right? Yes. Maybe still? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But um, that would be actually, that'd be epic. Um, but I, yeah, I did ballet for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I danced with Joffrey, Bolshoi, um, I, Orlando Ballet. I danced with them for a long time. So ballet was a big part of, you know, growing up and stuff. And then and you have to be disciplined, and that takes a lot so of time. So much discipline. In some ways, mm -hmm. dance takes you out of your social circle. Yes, it definitely does. You yeah. definitely become... Um, very integrated with your dancer friends, right. you know what I mean? Like you guys are all kind of going through the same thing. Like your friends don't understand what being on point is or mm -hmm. the pain of being on point or what it does to your feet and everything. So, um, yeah, you definitely, you know, find your little circle with yes. your dance friends. And my, I, you know, from Florida, and I would drive an hour every single day to go to Orlando Ballet. It's a lot. Um, yes, it was, it was a lot. And, you know, it's a lot of my mom, but I'm very appreciative that we did it just because I loved it so much. Mm -hmm. And, um... Yeah, you just kind of, so it was hard to like have my dance friends around me all the time um, just because we were an hour away from each other. We went to like separate schools and oh, stuff. Oh, right. Yeah, but um, but it wasn't too bad. So I, I loved that and I felt like by the time I was I stopped dancing, my body was kind of falling apart. <laughs> I was like very weak, very weak ankles. As a teen, I your, know. your body was falling I apart. Know, I would dance like 24-7. It was just like from, um, I started at 6 until I think I quit. I don't know. I don't actually, I don't remember when I quit, but it was, you know, early, I think it was high school. But you were already school. doing radio at that, that yes. point, right? So yeah. you were a street performer. Yes. Um, and with some, drums. And somebody was, now where did that idea come from? Yeah. <laughs> so in fifth grade, my elementary school had a program for like the fifth graders. And uh, it was just an after school steel drum program, which I was like, weird. That's so weird. Uh -huh. um, like steel, like not the flute, not drums or something it was steel drums and we would perform and um i just i just fell in love with it i thought it was so fun and relaxing and it was like cool to do like you know you had a lead you had your tenors um you had your double seconds and um my, going into middle school they didn't have any kind of steel drum programs obviously because that was a very unique thing mm -hmm. that we had so i had tommy reynolds from hamilton joe franken reynolds a very famous 70s band um he made my steel drums and he was out of stanford florida wow. so and then he sent them to trinidad he got them chromed um i was like okay like this is happening um and i didn't have like an outlet to like play you know so i would practice some songs in my dance room at, at home and um then i just went on the beaches of daytona beach <laughs> because i was like this is appropriate um and i started getting gigs like at mm -hmm. water parks or, like everywhere you know like they just wanted me to like play and 
um, and stuff, which was fun. Um, and then I would start getting radio interviews from it. So like every because you were out there yeah. as such a young child and good, is that why yeah. radio stations wanted to interview yeah, you? Yeah, it was like this little like white girl, <laughs> like playing steel <laughs> drums. Um, so that was it was crazy, you know. And I didn't really think much of it. It was just kind of like this was something I liked to do. Um, and I donated all my tips to animal shelters because, like, I, I just love animals. That's so, so sweet. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, it, that's kind of, like, the main reason I did it was so I could, like, you know, get blankets for animal shelters or something like that. And um, then the radio interviews started at 11 or mm -hmm. 10 or 11 or something like that. Um, and one of the station managers, they had interviewed me, interviewed me like, two or three times. I had been playing in the station or in the studio and he was like, you know, you, you like being on air. You sound good. Like I had a high squeaky voice. Like it was uh -huh. like not cute. Like it was just like, you're clearly 11 kind of thing. Um, and he's like, you should start your own radio show. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so like, why not start that as well? Um, and yeah, that's how the, it was a so 15 minute you, show. So basically you started with yeah. no training, no training and just somebody offered you an opportunity. Yeah. And you just went with it. Yeah. And I have to say, like, for anybody who's interested in the entertainment business, yeah. I would recommend they do what you do. Yeah. Which is, yeah. I remember one of the best pieces of advice I ever got mm -hmm. was, you know, you could study, and studying is great, right. and you can theorize, but there's no, there's nothing like getting out there and yes. learning from doing. Exactly. Now, you, okay, so you had your own radio show. Yes. You were balancing school. Right. You weren't really getting any help from anyone um, and yet you were interviewing some of the top celebrities around Gloria Steinem. Yes, yeah. So tell me some of the people that you interviewed that were really exciting. Oh my gosh, Gene Simmons was, I was um, over the weekend, you know, I was just walking around uh -huh. by Central Park and um, Gene Simmons was there so I interviewed him and I was like, oh I interviewed him, like that was, <laughs> that was a fun time. Um, but yeah, he was a lot of fun. So Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley from, from KISS. Um, Ed Sheeran, Pete Seeger was one of my big favorites. Wow. Um, he was such a legend. Um, it's it. Yeah. Was it also Katie Couric, too? Oh, Katie Couric. That was at a, a and, Girl Scout event. That and was fun. just some, some major, like, young, yeah. like, hot stars, right? Yeah, These Shawn boy Mendes. bands. Shawn Mendes. Yes, yeah. So it's been a lot. It's over 600. Have you ever interviewed somebody that you had a crush on? Oh, um, okay, so the Wanted. Um, they, okay, The Wanted and One Direction came out at the same time. They uh -huh. were both, like, hot, you know, young um, boy bands, but one, or The Wanted were, like, a little bit older, mm -hmm. and they didn't take off as, as well as One Direction did just because, like, One Direction had, the, like, the teen, the tweens, you uh -huh. know? Um, there was this one guy on The Wanted that I liked, and my, my sister and I both liked him. So uh -huh. he was kind of like, so that was a fun time to interview him, but I think that was, like, the only time I ever... Was like, oh hey, you know. <laughs> I was like, and I was also like thirteen. And uh -huh. He was like twenty. So oh, he was obviously. he was a little too old for you for at sure. that point. Definitely. But. Did you ever <laughs> interview somebody who wasn't nice or who was intimidating or made you feel like, oh gosh, this is really awkward? Because right. it can be really hard. Sometimes oh, no, famous people, they come with this allure, and it can feel uncomfortable. Yeah, but I don't know if you felt that or not, because sometimes when you're young, you don't have that feeling. You right. could be more bold, so exactly. it could go either way. Yeah, I never had that. Growing, okay. you know, just kind of growing up in in this industry and everything. I think if they were doing an interview with, you know, a kid, mm -hmm. um, you had to be a pretty nice person. Okay. Um, I remember I sent out a media request to Nicki Minaj, and she said, she was like the only one that had ever, you know, like usually they're just like you know, we're booked, I'm so sorry, or yeah. whatever. Like, it's usually a normal response. Yeah. Um, but I just, her response will, like, forever just, like, be in my head just because I thought it was so, like, funny, but also, like, what? <laughs> um, and she said, not even remotely interested, but keep shaken. And I was like, okay, um, cool. Like, I didn't really know how to react yeah. to that. Um, that was the only one that was, like, mm -hmm. kind of odd. I yeah. Guess. But, That's yeah. kind of a take back. But I guess yeah. you have to be <laughs> bold because yes. you were saying oh, yeah. that, Teachers weren't always no. so supportive, and were the kids supportive or impressed? Your peers? They didn't really care. I thought. I, I remember I, I just interviewed Ed Sheeran, and I came. I skipped class because mm -hmm. I had because that's pretty him. huge. His yeah, you know, his song is everywhere. Yeah, right. He's, he's a huge star mm -hmm. now, and um, even when I interviewed him, he was huge. Mm -hmm. And I remember I came back to school, and I think people had saw it, like they saw it on Facebook or something. And I was just like, it was a very like surreal moment because I was just like walking down and like lockers on both sides of me and like these kids just kind of like parted ways and I was like, 
okay, I'm going to go to class now. Like, this is kind of weird. Um, so it was never, it, well, school-wise, there was never any support, um, which wasn't a bad thing. I, mm -hmm. didn't, I didn't need their support. You know what I mean? Like, I just kind of did my own thing. Um, and then friend-wise, we just never talked about it. It was a subject we just sort of avoided. Um, I don't know why. We just, we just did. You have really great advice for yeah. people that's very wise and insightful. And you, you talk about kind of branding yourself. Right. And not really trying to fit in in order to be hired. And yeah. like you have this unique style, yes. and you're an influencer too. That's you. When oh. you was that your first job? Yeah, I was 11. Oh, how cute. I was sunburned from performing outside. I hope they paid you well at 11 <laughs> yeah. if they're going to work was, you. It was decent, you know. Yeah. It was good. <laughs> All right. Do you, do you have an agent now? I don't, no. Oh my God. All right. Well, no. if you're an agent <laughs> and you want to represent this, you know, woman of the future, oh, call. <laughs> Mark Goldman, I'll share yes. his information. That's her publicist. Now tell me about this photo. You look yes. like, it, is that a glamour like shot for something? Like um, for a magazine? It was, it was, I, you know, have been in a bunch of magazines, but it was just like a little photo shoot I was doing uh -huh. um, in the financial district. Which oh, is wow. Where I do everything. I uh -huh. live, work, go to school, all in the financial district. So that was just like Pearl Street or something. And that's my little baby. That's Aww. Penelope. She's my baby. Well, pug. you look very glamorous. Have Thank you been in you. Teen Magazine? Um, I think I sent you guys a photo too, but I've oh, been in a couple different Oh, what was that? Was that ones. from Teen? What, yeah. is, what magazine is this? This is Equanimity. It was a magazine in Texas or something. Which, and and I like, have to say, yeah. you're so humble oh, thank you. because you've achieved so much <laughs> at such an early age. And, and most people don't. You're in college right now. Yes. Now that you're in the business, are you training to stay in the business? What, yeah. what are you interested in now? I know, and you know, I've been thinking about this a lot recently, just because I've, um, I've been so blessed with like a lot mm -hmm. of really great opportunities, and and you've known how to use them. Yes, yeah, not that's everybody the would know how to use exactly. them, and so maybe that's where your branding and yes. wisdom comes in. Right, and you know, you have to meet with the right people, and they have to like you. You know, there's so many elements that go into. Um, into this business. Yes. Um, and I, you know, I've been to literally every single radio convention, every single, like over and over, like mm -hmm. the, um, you know, National Association of Broadcasters and radio, like Talkers Maggie, like I've been to like literally every single one, like multiple times mm -hmm. and, to get myself different opportunities. Um, and I just like, I like networking. Like it's yeah. fun. No, you know I, I mean? get it. Some I get people it. go to sleepovers, some people go to cocktail party or I would crash it's cocktail social, parties. It's social and also like, you can meet friends. Yeah. And now you never go, know what leads to what. Exactly. Yeah. And now I go to like all these things and it's like little family reunions. I'm like, yeah. you remember me when I was like 12, <laughs> like, you know, um, and that's how I got my job in New York in the first place was I was at a radio convention and um, I had, the first time I went to this convention, I interviewed Sean Hannity. Got in, he was my first internship um, when I was 16. And so I spent I love the Sean. He's such he's, a sweetie. He is so sweet. Anytime yeah. someone tries to tra or, you know, trash talk Sean, I'm like, don't even. Like, he's yeah. the nicest person. And I'm sure he loved you. Yes, he did. He was fantastic. He's very paternal. And, yes, yeah. very, very. Yeah. And um, I was on his show a couple of times. Like He was just like, I have this young, and I'm Lebanese, um, you know, Lebanese-American, so uh -huh. he loved that. Because, uh -huh. um, like, very Middle Eastern. Yeah. And so we talked about stuff. It was just like, it was such a fun time, you know, and I learned Well, you do TV, too, now. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think you want to combine radio with TV? Oh, for sure. Okay. I, I love radio, and I'm, you know, I've, I, I'm a producer for a lot of our national shows with my company, and now I'm an executive director so for my company. So explain that. But, it's, what is your company exactly? Well, Salem Media Group. It's not my company. Okay. But it's the company I work for. Okay. And so I do a lot for them and everything, but I definitely, like, I love being on air. I mm -hmm. like being in front of the camera. That's yeah. like, so that's the goal, is like okay. to do more of that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I love, you know, in the meantime, I love producing and going to school and being a, you know, executive director for this like department that I'm creating at, at the company. So it's just like, it's a bunch of fun, a bunch as, of fun things. And you like learn every element of the business yeah. in the meantime. Mm -hmm. so. it, it really is important to yeah. kind of learn behind the scenes exactly. and how to take ownership yes. of you know, your fans, because that's something that you bring right. with you. Exactly. Which is amazing. Yes. So what is next for you? And then we're going to do a segment um, as we get towards the end. We call it Keeping It Real. Okay. And cool. so I'll, I'll ask you those questions. But I want to know, like, 
What do you see in your future at this point? In, in college, what's your major? I'm MCA, which is Media, Culture, and the Arts. Okay, good. And I want to do a minor in politics. Oh, that's so, great. Yes, I'm a sophomore currently, um, so I guess I still have time for the minor. Now, are your college <laughs> but, teachers really impressed with you? Yeah, well, you know, it was really funny. I was walking out of our building, at our, my work building, mm -hmm. and I ran into my economics teacher in like on the street, and he was like, so what exactly do you do? And like, they're definitely more supportive and understanding than my high school teachers. Yeah. Um, because they understand like I have a real job and like I have, you know, deadlines with not only school but also with work. And yeah. like, so it's very stressful just like all together. Um, and when so, do you yeah, go out and great. socialize? Do you have time for that? I do. Okay, I good. <laughs> Everyone's okay. always like, do you have friends? And I'm like, yes, I hang out with people all the I time. I have friends. Study groups. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Right. Um, no, but yeah, all the time. You're so. just a good multitasker. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so what, for keeping it real, yes. what teacher in school made the most impact on you and why? Oh, goodness. Oh, my gosh. I had this one teacher. He was my, first of all, history is like my my thing. I mm -hmm. love history. And um, his name was Mr. Brinkerhoff. Um, and I just remember, like, he was so, I got him this book. It, it was Peter, Paul, and Mary, because I interviewed Peter from Peter, Paul, and Mary. Mm -hmm. And I think it was, or was it Paul? Oh, my gosh. There's been so many. Well, I one don't of remember them. after a while, you know? <laughs> um, I think it was Peter, though. And so I remember I got him the book, and he was just like, he was just like one of those teachers that I could go to and I could like talk to him about stuff. I remember like I'd go in during lunch and sometimes or like I would just like chill And what grade is class. that? This was junior year. Okay. My last year in high school because oh, nice. I moved up here for the job, for the internship oh, when wow. I my senior year of high school. So I didn't have like my senior year. You know okay. like everyone's like, "Oh, big yeah. deal senior year." Um so I I remember like we or I left his class one time. I think we got cake or something. I don't even remember. I just remember him being like a really supportive teacher. That's nice. Um yeah, and I just remember like it was just a good time. You need you know? at least one. Yes. Yeah. How would your friends describe you? Oh gosh. <laughs> um, I never. I. I was. I have never known how to like answer that kind of question. But I probably like bubbly, and um, that's all I really can think about. I'm like I'm a pretty like happy. Yeah. Bubbly, you positive. seem like a very upbeat, yeah. healthy, <laughs> yes. um, goal directed. Yes. Well, you're on purpose. Yeah. And you've had success in movement, and you right. have your whole life ahead of you, yes. which is Thank exciting. <laughs> Why did you choose your current profession? Yeah, so I've kind of like have fallen into. I, I like to. I like to think that I've kind of fallen into everything, like because you know when you really work on your opportunities, like like we were just talking mm -hmm. about, um, more just kind of like more just doors kind of open. Yeah. But I started almost two years ago now as an intern at this at Salem. And I worked my way, way up to part-time producer, and then I was co-producer for the na like this national show, like the third most listened to show in the country. And then now I'm creating my own department and an executive director for this department. Um, and so I, the question was how I got there. Um, <laughs> um, I was really good friends, or like I made really good connections with my current boss. Mm -hmm. um, he's the one that I saw at these different conventions. Mm -hmm. You know, he saw me everywhere. Um, and yeah, it was just a lot of a lot of networking, and it sounds like it was kind of natural. <laughs> it was you a know, very like natural, you're like, in your right yeah. field, and yes. I think sometimes when you're it, using your talents in the right way, yeah. doors will open if exactly. you know how to use them. Yeah, and I would suggest a lot of ideas to him. I was just like, oh well, I'll go to the White House to you, <laughs> you know, and produce. And you're you very know, mature. Site. You're kind of yeah. ageless in some ways, oh, so I'm you. sure you relate yes. to many different ages yes, because. I'd if I didn't know you were a teen, yeah. I don't know that I'd say, oh, she's a teen, because there's right. nothing about you that oh. says you are, you know, impulsive or right. immature. And oh, thank you. I, I mean, just from meeting you. Now, when you're having a bad day, mm -hmm. what do you do to make yourself feel better? Um, I have dance parties in my apartment. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, so like and 30 seconds. And who do you most admire in life? Um, my mom. Um, I love my mom. We're best friends. Um, there's a lot of like Oprah, obviously, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Of course, there's a lot of like major media people out there that I, of course, love, but my mom and I are best friends and Aww. like, she's the one that kind of like helped me create my style, um, and like who I've, is she fashionable too? She's the most fashionable Aww. person. Like, I don't know how she does it. Like, she's the coolest person. She's currently taking care of Penelope, um, because I'm in school and like Penelope is a very needy puppy. <laughs> um, and she's spoiled, like ridiculously spoiled. And, but yeah, she recently like dyed her hair silver and has like 
uh, pink and purple strips in it. Like, it's just like crazy. Well, maybe it's next like, time you'll come and you'll bring your mom. I will. We'll do a mom-daughter, yes. but she's yes. also lucky to have such a great daughter oh, like you. you. <laughs> Where can people find you? Yeah. And we'll have a link because you have a YouTube oh, show, yes. right? Well, and, my YouTube channel has all my celebrity interviews. Okay. So you can see the progression okay. of interviews. And, and where stuff. can we listen to you? Is there a link to? Yeah, so everything's on, you know, obviously all my social sites, which okay. is um, at Pavlina Asta. Okay. So that's on everything, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and, and you also have a website so I people do, can yes, find you. So maybe Asta. we'll do that. We'll yes, put a link yeah. up to your website. And basically that's it. Any final yeah. advice for anybody who's interested in following in your footsteps? Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, you know, um, really take up all the internships or all the internships. You know, that's how I really, you yeah. know, built my way through this was through internships. Um, and just taking all the opportunities that you can. Um, that's really important. Network with everyone. Have your business card ready. I remember, like, just don't be up like my me. Ways. I write them all on toilet paper. Oh. It's very embarrassing. You <laughs> are a so pleasure. Funny. You are a Thank doll. You. Remember, my son is single. Oh. <laughs> um, he would kill me. Oh my God. Anyway, we look forward to seeing you in yes. the future, and more great, great things are definitely going to come. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Talking Live. We will see you next week, and you could look for all the links on my website on Facebook and uh, share them with everyone. I'm sure you're going to want to hear this interview many times.